Um, you may have first been introduced to Harvey um, with movies like The Internship, uh, shows like The Thundermans and Eye Candy, uh, movies like Netflix, Truth or Dare, or Fox's Raising Hope, uh, for which you won a Glad Media Award. Uh, most recently, though, um, you may have also fallen in love with him as Benedict from uh, a very popular sci-fi series, The Magicians, uh, which we had Harvey on with some of those cast members at two previous Wizard World virtual experiences. Uh, but most recently, as of last night, and I just watched the, uh, the new episode last night, it was so amazing. Uh, we met George, um, the brand new character on Zoe's Extraordinary Playlist. Um, he is in the upcoming movie Werewolves Within, but he is our favorite familiar from what we do in the shadows. His name is Guillermo de la Cruz. Please give it up for Harvey Guillen. <laughs> Hooray! <laughs> <laughs> wow, that was quite an intro. That was a really cool intro. <laughs> thank you, thank you. You can make noise when you come in. Everyone's like unsure of sort of how to do the entrance, you know? <laughs> That's why I make, like, make silent noise. So I, just like to... <laughs> <laughs> I love it. You kind of like vogued in, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, Harvey, thanks so much for being here. Um, you had a hilarious post the other day on Twitter about being uh, returning to lockdown uh, with that like Guillermo <laughs> gif <laughs> of like him just like locking things down and battening the hatches. Uh, you were supposed to be back uh, filming now, uh, but you're still still at home. Uh, tell us a little bit about, again, sort of where you're at right now and, and how excited you are to get back to filming. Yeah, so I'm, I'm safe and sound at home. Um, you know, there's a lot of moving parts, especially what's going on around the world. Um, so we we just, the schedule got shifted, so we should be shooting uh, pretty soon. So we have to go to the location and quarantine, which is safe, um, and everyone yeah. should be. Um, I think we're the only country that doesn't do that, which is surprising to me. And that America just like, come on in. Yeah. So like, oh, I came from a really like, no, nah, no, you don't need to quarantine. Just come on in. Um, which is so weird. Cause when I was shooting Zoe's in Vancouver, I felt so safe and like, yeah. you get, you know, tested twice a week for, you know, or every other day for, you know, shooting and you can't step on set unless you've been checked off by your physician. And it's like, it's really, you know, well-structured. And also they made quarantine when you arrive in Canada, which is why, you know, um, they have it more under control, I think. Um, and so, yeah, we're just doing that safely. And sure enough, soon enough, we'll be shooting in Toronto again. And uh, I'm excited for season three. Yeah, that's so awesome. I mean, I know we are. And, you know, I was I was thinking about it last night uh, with all with everything that's going on uh, in the world. Uh, it's it's just so nice to have some new entertainment content out there um, to have a nice little escape. You know what I mean? From everything. And, and, and also to reflect on sort of things that are going on in the world. And so that was why I was so excited to get uh, the first episode of Zoe's Extraordinary Playlist last night. And I don't know how I missed it. I, I, I didn't realize that you were going to be featured on this until like the last few months when they announced you. Uh, George, such an amazing character. We talked a little bit about him uh, prior to this, uh, and you get the heart song of the of the pr season premiere, um, which was which was so fun. Melissa Manchester's "Don't Cry Out Loud." Talk a little bit. You, I, I said this to you before we came on. Just seeing your eyes performing on the show, <laughs> it just felt like you were like in your element. That you were so happy to be part of like this kind of musical theater um, world that's being played so well uh, on a TV show. What was it like to shoot uh, Zoe's, and and how excited are you about uh, this up upcoming season two? Yeah, it was super fun. I uh, I almost wasn't able to do it. Actually, a uh, funny story. I, oh my gosh! Uh, schedule wise, we were supposed to start shooting Shadows earlier um, in the summer. And it was to last minute, so they had um, come and asked if I would be interested in going out for the part. And I was really interested because I went to school for musical theater, and a lot of people don't know that, but I went to school for musical theater. Nice. Um, and so I was like, oh, that's cool. I've never done it, you know, for TV and film, so that'd be a nice change for a bit. And um, my schedule wouldn't allow it. Like, it was like I was supposed to be that's the exact same time we were supposed to be in Toronto already. And at the, they came and they asked, and I said, no, we can't. So we said no once. And they came again. They're like, are you sure the schedule won't allow? And it's like, <laughs> We don't think it will allow. And then at the last, last minute, I think it was like their, their time, the um, creator, Austin, like he was just like, uh, we tried one last time. Like at the last minute, we tried one last time to check in and see if schedule wise. And what do you know it, things shifted and schedule and like, you know, the team um, had some conflicts in scheduling and whatnot. So everything shifted at the last minute. And at the last minute, I, I think I got like the call like on a Thursday or something. And it was like, oh yeah, you can do it. And then I had to be on a, on a flight, like on a Friday night or something. Oh my gosh. So really last minute and it worked out and, and it was nice because it was, you know, something to do, you know, on the off season of shadows and something that's totally different than Guillermo because Guillermo, you know, everyone's like, is this just Guillermo going on and <laughs> doing shout and doing Zoe? So I was like, no, it's a different character, which is fun. And the whole thing about musical theater is that, you know, George just oozes this energy of like, 
peppiness and like happiness and like you know musical theater like when you watch a musical it's always usually like it's like oh very musical theater it's like to the back row and over the top and big um and so for george i got to play that with Guillermo, he has uh, certain uh, character traits that are similar to George, but he's sure. more subtle. Like Guillermo is more grounded and he's more subtle and he just, he gives you more with just a, a, a look to the camera, Guillermo does, than George. George will give you the whole face, you know? <laughs> George doesn't, uh, he's not subtle. So it's really nice and exciting to to, to see where uh, everyone gets to see this character play out this season. Um, the cast is amazing and so welcoming and so awesome. working with Gene and everyone um, was just uh, a dream. They're all wonderful. Uh, we, I mean, we can't wait to see and, and I love episodic TV where it doesn't all come out at once we get to like um, still get excited for next week you know there's nothing wrong with those binge shows and the Netflix shows and things um, but it's exciting to see one after the other and sort of get ready for the next uh, episode you joked around <laughs> about yeah because sometimes with some of the other characters on the show start singing it's sort of you're like oh man this is like a surprise that's coming out of but George you knew he was going to be singing the heart song like right off the bat <laughs> you could see it in his face you know <laughs> and also when he's not when he's singing like you know the first number you see him in is in Hello Dolly and that was the first number I had to learn while I got to Toronto or to Vancouver sorry and I was in quarantine so Mandy Moore who's an amazing choreographer you, you probably know who she is but if you don't you gotta look her up and she yeah. just won the Emmy for a choreography for the show um, was so sweet and kind to just like message me it was like hey this is gonna be a dance so she sent me a video of the dance so I could learn it while in quarantine because right as soon as we're done with quarantine you go straight to rehearsals and you get like one rehearsal and then you put it up on its feed and you film it you know it's really quick as opposed to a musical when you do it on a stage production or on Broadway sure. or something where it's like you have rehearsal for a couple of weeks and, you know, or even months and then you put it on here. It was like, here's your dance. We're filming it tomorrow, oh um, which is nice. And it keeps you on your toes. And I haven't done that since college. So I felt like my musical theater days coming back and it was really nice. It was fun. Well, that's, and that's kind of the part of the fun of the show is that raw nature of, of, of feeling it like it's spontaneous always that these musical numbers aren't like, being well practiced, yeah, like you said, like months and a hand, that everything's just like people are spontaneously busting out into song and dance. Yeah. And you feel you feel that with the choreography and the direction. Um, and it's a credit to the show. Uh, Zoe's playlist at Zoe's playlist, which I'm, I'm sure is a Zoe's playlist fan um, group. So thanks for being here, Zoe's playlist. Said, uh, what do you hope? Uh, and we, you know, we don't want spoilers on the series, obviously. But what are you excited, most excited about George? And what other songs do you want to see George perform? Uh, just starting with kicking off with our fan questions. Ooh, um, well, I'm really excited for everyone to see, um, you know, we see George um, kind of hiding a secret of uh, how he feels and how he feels uh, that he needs to overcompensate to fit in to, with a group of guys, being one of the boys um, and being part of a group. So it's always hard to be the first, you know, your first day at school, your first day on the job. Those sort of things are always hard. So you you try to overcompensate to like make everyone kind of like you, you know, like George makes that a uh, uh, decision and so I'm kind of glad that we see him start that way and we see him evolve into something and one of my favorite numbers which I can't tell you what song it is but um, <laughs> it's in episode 4 coming up Ooh, all right. uh, and it's uh, a really great moment with uh, with Jane um, and who plays Zoe and so it's just a really cool when I when I got the script and I and I saw what he was singing, I was like, oh yes, this is so perfect. And it's such like an a, icon that I love personally that I was just like, what? I was like, no other <laughs> world would I be able to like sing this song and portray and the moment and the beats and you know and what and what George is feeling and it comes across. So I'm really excited for episode four. That's so awesome. Uh, so I mean, that's a good tease. That's a good tease. At least you know when it's coming. Yeah. You know what I mean. And now we're all thinking I mean, of I like. Have to wish. I didn't answer the other question. I said I I, I no, jumped okay. on the idea. <laughs> but if I, if I wanted to wish for a song for George, yeah, um, it probably like a duet or something. I was just talking to Alex Noah about this. I was like, I don't see a script with us doing Sweet Honey Rag from Chicago or something, you know. Uh, so it might be like something fun like that, like a Roxy and Velma duet, whether with Jane or with uh, Alex would be great. Yeah, well, uh, so Rip uh, Rip DeShayo, and I, I apologize, uh, watching on Twitch right now, um, submitted some questions beforehand, said, oh my God, you got to work with Mandy. Um, also said uh, that it's so, uh, they're so glad that you got to finally live out all your musical theater dreams. Um, so fun. And they actually asked the question, what was your, what would be your dream role? And we're not not gender specific. We're not going gender specific here. What would be your Broadway um, dream role? Yeah. I mean, Broadway dream role, I would love to originate something. You know, like I always, whenever I see a production, I'm like, oh, that would have been great. Like when I saw like, you know, Barfay and Putnam County Spelling Bee. Yeah. Um, just yeah. stuff like that where I'm like, oh my God, that would have, or like, you know, uh, Book of Mormon, which I know Josh got, like I was like, oh, that's such a great role. 
um, but would love to originate uh, a role or reprise a really you know great one. I just recently did a, a concert uh, for charity, um, and I got to do Ursula song from Little Mermaid. Oh, awesome! Um, but there's awesome. a video of that flying somewhere on the internet if you <laughs> find it. Uh, they, happy birthday! Because uh, <laughs> uh, that was fun, and I was like, you know what? This would this would be a nice gender bender, you know, like a nice like flip it. So that would be a fun one. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny because we, and I don't know if you remember this, but for those of you that have watched uh, our panels before of Wizard World, uh, we had you twice on For the Magicians, and both time, um, the musical, ep- that had show had musical episodes as well, and obviously some of the favorite, and I remember you being on those panels being like, oh my gosh, I just wish Benedict like got to be um, in one of those scenes, and Chell's Nerd is asking, all right, so we already know one of George's uh, heart songs. And we 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 were excited about the next one coming up, uh, episode four. But uh, at Chell's Nerd, who, who submitted like twenty plus questions, we we love at Chell's Nerd uh, for you. But I, I want to, yeah. what would Benedict? Do you have a, a song for Benedict? We're going back to the magicians. We're in Benedict's shoes. What is his heart song? If you could pick, I know there's a lot of Matt Cross. Oh my gosh, that would be a, uh, yeah, that's a really good one. I mean, they always pick really cool like songs. Um, maybe something by Queen. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, would be great, or um, or if we really want to go and like tug at like Benedict's heartstrings, we could sing um, "All by Myself." <laughs> All <laughs> by my yeah, that would be a good one. Um, yeah, or something. <laughs> so I always wanted to do a musical number with magicians, and um, schedule didn't allow one season, and the other one, the season was already written, and Benedict had just joined, and. So it was never like the perfect timing, but I've always been a fan of such uh, of all the episodes um, whenever they come out. So yeah, it, it looks like the universe was like not yet, and then <laughs> uh, along came Zoe's. <laughs> yeah, that's so awesome. How what what is it like? What was it like moving from those through these different fan bases? Because obviously you had the huge sci-fi fantasy fan base of the Magicians, um, and. Uh, and then moving into what we do in the shadows, which again is like a lot of comedy nerds, a lot of like horror horror nerds as well. Um, and now Zoe's musical theater, oh my gosh! Like, what is it? Is there a particular nerd that you find yourself being uh, more drawn to within those three? I I mean, I, as you were reading them out loud like earlier before I came on, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I was like, I got to do some really cool stuff, and I've yeah. I've been the fortune to be like, you know, the magicians fan base is so amazing and loyal to this day, um, and to be you know a, a small part of that world was such a, an honor and treat. Then to move on to shadows, who you know uh, the comedy is just like gold and like so they're all very different in their own like you know the sci-fi with the magicians and like with the comedy gold of like shadows were like the timing of those characters i mean i always i'm blown away like every time i think of our cast and we're a small cast we're only five actors sure. of how great everyone's dynamic is and how we bounce off each other like it, that's insane and then with zoe's it's just a musical theater family and it reminded me again of like that college experience of when you go to summer camp for musical theater or something, you know, and it's like, everyone's just like, so welcoming. Everyone's on point. They, everyone bring like, it, you're always surprised because you know, songs coming up that you know was in the script, but then you don't get to see it until we, we see that actor rehearse it. And it comes to life. And like, you're like, Whoa, that's so cool. Like a second ago, it was just, you know, on a page and it's like, and here it totally is interpreted by this, you know, uh, actor in a different way that you never even imagined. So, uh, they're all so different. I can't, I, I could never, it's a, it's a real Sophie's choice. I can't, <laughs> Um, because I, and then so how lucky am I to be like a part of three different worlds, you know, um, that are so loyal and their fans are amazing. So thank you guys, the fans for. Always yeah. Supporting. Well, that's a great segue. I mean, we have fans of all three shows hanging out, right? You know, like, and everyone loves you independently for all three, but then also universally as you, as Harvey. Um, and we love seeing you in different, in different things. So that's um, good. Okay. yeah. Yeah. The Harvey Universal. <laughs> <laughs> that could be your, uh, that's your new Twitter handle, at, at Harvey Universal. <laughs> uh, Jeffrey Chim said, I want to what we do in the Shadows musical episode. It's not out of the realm of... Well, of- we kind of had a little bit of that with Naja and Laszlo's uh, singing, you know, back to their singing days. Um, you know, true. who can forget such classics as I'm Feeling Horny for Blood, um, <laughs> which is a great uh, single that uh, you could probably download somewhere right now. <laughs> <laughs> But for Guillermo, I don't know. Uh, maybe that's a secret talent. You know, there was a scene last season where um, they go to um, the Necromancer, uh, and it's a community college. Yeah. And he mentioned something like, "I used to take acting classes here," or something. And I think got omitted 
for well, time reasons, but he did say that in the script at one point. So I don't know if they'll probably bring, maybe he was taking a class just, you know, to become a public speaker or whatnot. Who knows? <laughs> I don't, I don't even know. I don't even know what the next season. <laughs> uh, that's a great question. Well, oh my God. So many, so many fun things happen. I just, I love like, and I know I can speak for the fans when just thinking back on some of the ridiculous things that have happened so far. Uh, obviously season two that was all about building towards uh, Guillermo taking over as vampire hunter, um, being the descendant of Van Helsing and what a great season finale. Um, talk a little bit about the, the, the season one and season two because um, Rip uh, Desho asks if you could choose Guillermo's trajectory moving forward, what would you have him do? But also like w- reflecting back on the past, how fun was it to see that that arc in season two and finally get that, you know, badass Guillermo at the end there? I mean, look, I didn't know what was going to happen with Guillermo in season one. You know, like the, the actual surprise of the finale of season one was a surprise to me as anyone else, um, you know, Guillermo could have been really a character that you kind of slept on, you know, like the character that was like, oh, he's the, you know, the familiar, he's the assistant, like he's just there. But it's always the people that you least expect that probably produce the most power, you know, <laughs> and like here lies this familiar who's been wanting to be a vampire for like a decade. Um, and to find out that he has, you know, Van Helsing blood running through his veins is yeah. kind of like, what? Um, and a great, you know, plot twist. And so when we started season two, I didn't know how uh, much we would get into that storyline because I thought, oh, maybe they'll be like, it's in the background, we'll talk about it or whatnot. But sure enough, off the bat, he likes, he's killing vampires, you know, from episode one in season two, um, which is great because, um, you know, really kind of showed Guillermo um, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a light that we haven't seen him in a world that he's a badass, where he doesn't even know he's a badass. Sometimes you don't even know how powerful we are as human beings just like totally. we. And so it was kind of a cool story and trajectory for season two. And the way that it ended with the, you know, the theater with the vampires and whatnot was amazing. And that whole combat scene was really cool. And we got so much positive feedback from the audience and seeing someone that traditionally by Hollywood standards, you wouldn't put as a superhero or as an action hero. And then you're like, here we are. Like, you know, here's Guillermo, you know, he's like, he looks like me, he talks and he's a badass, you know? So it's kind of like, it was very um, aspirational, I think, for people to look at someone on screen that looks more like them and is a badass. So I think that's such a cool uh, contribution to to the world of uh, entertainment. No, 100%. And, you know, I think that so it's all summed up in his in his final line. You know, my name is Guillermo de la Cruz. Like he's accepting his heritage. You know what I mean? And also just who he is uh, as a person. You know, and uh, and then and then just goes on that killing spree. And then and then to see the the complete juxtaposition of Nandor is like, no, get, you're supposed to get our laundry. I mean, it really speaks volumes. You know, it 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 sets us up for that. Like, oh, he's still not being respected by yeah. his. You know, oh, yeah, his uh, line was, uh, I don't give a shit who you are. You yeah. <laughs> laundry uh, um, which just goes to show you can get all the accolade and and attention uh, and and recognition for being amazing and to some people you will always be that same thing you know it's like being a baby brother or baby sister in a family where like you can grow up and be an adult and and do things that are amazing and to them you'll always be the baby brother you know it's like it doesn't matter what your life trajectory holds for you you'll always be that and so i think with this group of people uh, you know, or vampires, group of vampires, they're not human. So it just shows that like, oh, you know, they're so self-absorbed that they're like, we don't care. <laughs> like it's like, but they do care because that uh, do. will definitely change the dynamic going forward. Yeah. What do you, um, again, we, I, I hate, we, I hate talking spoilers. I, I like talking more like just what are you most excited about or, you know, without revealing any sort of like script details, but you even mentioned you don't know much of those anyway. Uh, um, what are, what are you like Harvey most excited about in terms of like the trajectory of Guillermo? You know, I really hope that, you know, we pick up where we left off and it's just how does that, uh, you know, include him into their lifestyle? Like, what does that mean for them? Like, do sure. they form a truce? Do they uh, fight together? Do they go on, you know, because the vampiric council, you know, all the vampires in that room were massacred by him, but in their defense. So it was like, I'm doing this all for you. So do you get mad at the person who saved your life and pushed you out of the way of the bus? Yeah. Or do you get mad that the bus crashed into your car? You know, it's like, <laughs> which one is like, what, what are you going <laughs> to you to pick your battles here? So I feel, um, I, I'm looking forward to seeing how that intertwines and hopefully the writers, and I'm sure they have, have given you know, a story where uh, we make everyone happy of like, you know, the audience is like, yes, that makes sense. And that totally goes with that or um, or a journey, you know, like where's the next journey they're going to go on to. And I would love to find out more history about how he got 
you know, Van Helsing blood? Like, what is that lineage from? What is that storyline? Would be great to to tap into that, you know? So um, that's something I would look forward to. And I'm sure the, you know, audience and fans would love to see as well. Yeah, that's a great point. The show does such a fun job of like teasing the vampires lineage, right? And sort of like what they were in, like what wars they were in, what time period they were evolved from, you know what I mean? But we we got a little taste of that with Guillermo, but not like fully. So that would be so cool to like dive into. Yeah, sort of the I history. know that Paul had mentioned a couple of things that are kind of like out there now, like, you know, they will be getting um, a dog. <laughs> Which is fun, and I was like, uh, you know, that sounds like a like. How does that intertwine? I'm sure Guillermo will have to end up taking care of it. Like it's just like you know, a, a hound to protect them or whatnot. So unless he's not in the household, like who knows? Like it's like the the ideas are just like percolating in my head now, and uh, and I'm I'm just excited to to get back to filming it. And so uh, in a couple of weeks. I'll hopefully find out <laughs> what's happening. Yeah, that's uh, at Chels Nerd. Uh, mentioned this on Twitter last night, and I responded. And I was like, "Oh my gosh!" The instant we said, "Dog," like the vampires have a dog, I like played out the whole episode uh, in my head and just was like <laughs> laughing out loud to myself. Uh, we, she said, "We hear from," or they said, uh, "We hear from Paul Sims that the vampires will be getting a hellhound next season. If you could choose the breed, which dog breed would you pick to play the hellhound?" It's a fan question coming in. I mean. <laughs> I, I, I mean, they, I, they have to be obviously like, you know, a, a, a dog with the resume, I'm assuming, because they probably <laughs> want to the best. So they probably would like bring back to life you know, Lassie or something or or the dog from Full House, Comet. <laughs> oh, you think it's like a famous dog? You think it's like a TV, a famous TV dog? Oh. I think I, I think they're better. I think we probably would be able to get Comet instead of Lassie because I don't know if they can bring Lassie back, but I don't know if Comet's around, he might be booked, but if Comet's around from Full House, we could probably book him on the show. Oh my gosh. There was a lot, uh, a lot of people are saying Palm in the chat right now. UV Dove says the tiniest Pomeranian, let's play roulette, Pomeranian please, Chels Nerd. That'd be Everyone. funny. Yeah. That'd be really funny. Yeah. I had a Pomeranian growing up. Oh. I know, rest in peace Chico. Um, but <laughs> I literally thought, that's actually really funny. A Pomeranian as a hell like that. Yeah, that's that's oh, yeah. good writing. Are these writers who are sending these questions? Yeah, I know, no, just Uber fans, Uber fans. But uh, sometimes they're just as good. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> Uh, people want a road trip in this new season. Uh, UV Dove and Poppy Plant said it's road trip time. The Vamps and Guillermo go to Cracker Barrel. That's uh, another suggestion. Well, I don't think they would. Is, uh, I don't think the vampires would enjoy Cracker Barrel unless Cracker Barrel changed their menu recently to have blood, which could be. I don't know. <laughs> but um, but a road trip. That sounds yeah. That sounds fun. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Turbo Shani says the smaller the dog, the funnier it would be. Um, I want to go back to the the fight from the last the finale um, because it leads into a fan question. But when we were talking about it, Let's Play Roulette said Guillermo's fight in the finale was fire, six fire emojis. Uh, Juju Bean says, and we were the better for it. Uh, UV Dove says iconic. Um, this question comes from UV Dove. Um, which stunt? Uh, you you have a great if you haven't seen it. Um, uh, not Guillermo. Harvey has a great uh, video pinned to his Twitter that shows the fight choreography for that final scene. So fun to watch that and then then watch the actual scene from the finale. Um, was that the hardest, scariest stunt sequence um, for you? Or are there any stunts you're hoping to do in season three? Um, U- UV Dove said they would love to see Guillermo wield a broadsword. Um, so yeah, I guess reflecting back, you know, what was your favorite stunt or hardest stunt? And then what are you excited potentially for uh, moving forward in season three? Um, I think I love the stunts that that video that's pinned on my Twitter was that was the day I learned that stunt. So I had just learned it wow. 30 minutes prior. So that whole routine, everyone's like, wow, that must have been like the final dress. I was like, that's the morning I learned it. Like it was like with like Tick, who's amazing. Our stunt coordinator, he taught me, you know, we took the, the time to learn it. Ahead. And so we learned it like in like 30 minutes and then we did like a run through. And he said, I'm just going to film it for you to see where you can clean up stuff or like, you know, the first time around is not great. Oh, so let's just film it. And then like we did it. He was like, oh, wow. Because <laughs> like we did it in one take and I was like, yes. So I was like, yes. Because, you know, as an actor, sometimes, you know, people put on like, you know, kid gloves and they're like, oh, well, they're just an actor. They're not stunt. They don't know. They don't have movement. And I was like, no, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Right. And so I thought of it as a dance, you know, choreography. And it's like five, six, seven, eight. And that's the way we approached it. And, and what came out was like, wow, that looks so cool. And so you know, uh, if I can do it, you can do it. Call now. <laughs> but I'm looking forward to any other stunts. You know, I did most of the stunts for last season. I did all of them except for one that they didn't let me do because of insurance reasons, because it was basically uh, my stunt uh, person had to fall downstairs. 
and like roll and stuff and like you know yeah, yeah. He, he knows the technique and stuff and I, I would have done it I was like that looks like I mean if you teach me I could do it like no you're not doing that one <laughs> so everything else like even flying out of a window like the third story window that's all me like I just fell backwards and we built that set in a sound stage and I think there's footage of me doing that somewhere online as well but it's me falling out of the window um backwards when I Flipping everyone nice, else. Nice. Um, so yeah, so I would I welcome all stunts. So I'm excited to see what next. Hopefully it has stunts. Hopefully it has some cool stunts, and it's not like a uh, a no stunt season for gear. <laughs> <laughs> they just completely backtrack on the whole. Yeah, I was like, it'd be silly to backtrack now and be like, no, I guess this season he's just like you know. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> How about the broadsword? So, I mean, you got to use a lot of wooden stakes, obviously, in that final scene. Uh, but yeah, the, the specific shout out was to a broadsword. Uh, how, how do you feel about broadsword sword wielding? Uh, in I, I mean, I'm 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 okay with it if I learn it. You know, I think uh, I I take such you know pride in like doing what like people do every day as a profession, like a stunt person does this every day you know like this is what they do and it's a craft you know and it's like an art so learning a little bit of it, it's like you know I'm you know I'm not a tap dancer but I can learn a routine if I need to for you know so it's like I'm not a stunt person but I can learn enough with the right people and we're just fortunate enough to have a team of such experts that I feel completely safe so yes give me the sword <laughs> everything the you know chainsaw anything you want there I'll juggle it <laughs> <laughs> nice change. And uh, that's a good segue. We have an Ash versus Evil Dead panel later this uh, afternoon, Harvey. So there's oh. the chain, chainsaw segue. Nice job. Nice short. <laughs> Um, you mentioned the amazing cast. I mean, my God, uh, some of the most uh, hilarious uh, people of all time uh, make up your, your small cast on a regular basis. And then not only do we get that, but we get all of the amazing uh, cameos. Obviously, the Vampiric Council scene from uh, season one, and then a lot of them return. Uh, obviously, Jermaine you know, returns in uh, season two. Uh, what other... Um, this is, comes from Jeffrey Chim, who's watching from South Wales. What other characters or actors from horror franchises would you love to appear in the show? Or really just any sort of sci-fi fantasy. Um, do you have any sort of goal cameos <laughs> or dream cameos? I mean, as characters or as just, our, I mean, as actors, I mean, I have a list of like actors that I think would be great to come and play with us, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, as characters, I feel like, you know, we've done vampires, we've werewolves, um, witches, um, warlocks, you know, um, Ghost, so I think we're covering a lot of the supernatural. <laughs> um, I mean, I've always said this before, and I said it again. I'd love to see a mermaid. So oh. I think a mermaid would be a great, or a siren, or something like that. Just for my personal like wants, just because I think those would be great. Um, who? I, I mean, I don't know. Like, I, I, when I keep thinking of a mermaid, I was like, maybe like Jenny Slate or something. You know? <laughs> oh yeah. But um, Amy Sedaris, like. Um, just, I don't know why, just because I think when I think of that character, it's like that, that'd be a, yeah, Amy Sedaris would be great. Um, yeah, I think uh, I, I, I'm welcome to anyone and everyone who wants to come and play on the show because we're so lucky already to have such great cameos. Yeah, my gosh, Jenny Slate would be would be so. I mean, you had uh, Nick Kroll, obviously, so there might be some connections there. Um, and then yeah. Amy Sedaris is a, a comedy icon, um, and you know, did we just not also known now for uh, her amazing cameo in uh, Mandalorian? So hey, it's a perfect. And you had Mark Hamill, and you had Mark Hamill. So I mean, it's not crazy, <laughs> not crazy. It's like letting us know the time to lock things in. <laughs> yeah, my gosh, my gosh. Um, talk a little bit about uh, Sarah Mitchell. We we talked a little bit about that. You haven't gone to Toronto yet, but you're about to go back to Toronto and start shooting. Um, you talked a little bit about Canada and just the safety there, but what, what's your, uh, Sarah Mitchell wants to know what's your favorite thing just in general about Toronto, the city, shooting there. We have a bunch of fans uh, from Canada watching, so uh, they were just oh, curious. Hi. Yeah. Um, yeah, Toronto's great. I love Toronto. I just came back from Vancouver. I love Canada in general, and I think those are the two cities that I've visited the most. And Vancouver is beautiful and, and, and it's lush green around, makes it feel like you're in the middle of the woods, but you're in a metropolitan, you know? So it's kind of really cool that, that way. And Toronto is really cool. It feels like um, like New York, but like cleaner, <laughs> just like <laughs> smaller and not as like um, as busy, but like it has that feeling. And I like the I like the, the buildings in Toronto. They just have some really cool buildings. I got to live in this house that was like built in like, 1794 you know and it was just like yeah. and not because it was like, wow this is historic land. it was just like no just like this whole street of houses are over like 300 years old you know something crazy um but 
yeah, it was really nice to just, um, I like the architecture of the old buildings in Toronto and, and, and also like, you know, when it's safe to, not that it would be anytime soon, but like uh, when I was there, you know, just a lot of shopping and restaurants, the food was great too. So yeah, I miss Canada. I'm, I'm looking forward to going back to Canada. <laughs> Yeah, and what's the, I mean, you don't have to take us through every specific step, but what has the process been like going back to work and filming, uh, given all the the regulations and things like that? Yeah, so when I went to Zoe's, um, basically, before you get on a plane, they test you and you get your results before you get on in your quarantine kind of, you know, at home, and so you don't uh, jeopardize the test. And then you go to the city, which I for me was Vancouver. And then when you land, um, you know, they're really good about you're not supposed to come into the country unless you have a reason for being there. Sure. So, uh, you know, essential workers obviously are at the forefront and they, so, you know, the plane was pretty much packed with people who were coming in to help and whatnot. So when I got into the line and through customs and they had put down essential as my reason for visiting, they're like, what's your reason to visit? And I was like, um, I'm filming a show here. And they're <laughs> like, are you, a, you know, a, you know, a first responder? And I was like, no, but one could say that laughter is the best medicine, right? <laughs> Step aside, sir. And I was like, got it, got it. <laughs> so it was a little nice. bit difficult because, but that's so great about Canada is that like they are taking it seriously. They, yeah, you know, yeah. and then eventually they check off like you've been tested. You have some sort of quarantine. You will be um, by yourself. You're not sharing a space with anyone. And it was so great that like to see how they had done it what made me like, oh, it's doable. Like we should be able to do this in America. And we're not, <laughs> we're not doing it, but we should be doing it because that seems to be working. Like they do it in New Zealand, they do it in Canada. Yeah. And we're the only country that apparently is like, come on in, you you have a cold, who cares? You have a fever, no worries. Um, I think we should change that. <laughs> I think we should definitely change. So um, I can speak for myself since I've gone through it. I can vouch for the way that it's being done <laughs> over in other countries. And uh, I think we should do it. I think we should do it here in America. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, and, and I know I speak from from the fans, you know, we, I mentioned this up top, you know, we're so excited for new content, you know what I mean, and, and new entertainment, but we also wish the cast, the crew, the writers, the actors, uh, safe, you know, all the all our best wishes and health. So be safe, be safe up there. Uh, yeah, you know, we want to do, a, you know, we want to create content for you guys, and this, what, this whole, something to remind ourselves is during this whole pandemic is that the first thing people ran to when we were quarantined was entertainment. You yeah. ran, you went through all your Netflix, you went through all your uh, shows that you haven't seen, or you binged your favorite shows over again, because as we've shown in the past, even with the Great Depression, people run to entertainment for an escape. So our contribution as artists, my contribution as an artist, is to provide content for you to escape for a few minutes, you know? And if that's my contribution, then I'm good with that, because I'm not a first responder, and I'm not, I didn't go to medical school, but what I can do is contribute that, and, and if you guys are patient i know it's like been a long year and last year and going into this year but if you're patient you know the content's coming but we want to do it safely um just for you guys no and i, and I think um like you said what what entertainment does do is, is is as important it gives it gives the first responders a break right and it gives those people that are struggling with with different things going on um a little break and that's super important for mental health you know and so we appreciate you uh for doing that i know i speak on on behalf of all the fans and just say thank you um for for providing that because uh, even something like this uh you know we're we're distance we're we're apart um but you've got fans watching from from all over the the, the u.s canada um europe uh turning it tuning in right now and it's and Wales, South Wales, is South in Wales. <laughs> appreciative of you being here. So uh, thanks again. Um, this this kind of leads in. Um, you, you sort of touched on it a, a tiny bit just in a second. But Kaylee Kane actually asked, you know, after the year we've been through and and what's going on, is there is there one thing that you've learned to appreciate more? Um, and shout out to her boys Jack and Maddie who are big fans, uh, watching as well. But uh, Kaylee just was yeah curious about you, Harvey. Is is there something you've taken away from this whole this whole past year? Yeah, that, uh, you know, it's it's family and um, and friends and relationships that matter the most, you know, and so we all want to go on trips. I miss traveling. Um, I'm fortunate enough that because I, I'm performing that I get to at least leave the city for a little bit and go and work in a different one. But at the end of the day, um, you know, what really matters is just our health and like just being um, safe with our family and um, the quarantine kind of showed that, you know, because being separate from your family and not in the same bubble can cause a conflict because you're not in the same household. So you are kept away from loved ones, you know, 
Yeah. And that's uh, unfortunately what happened to, you know, a lot, a lot of people um, because we didn't expect this. It happened so quickly and it was like, oh, we have to quarantine. You can't break a bubble. You shouldn't burst into other. Um, and so what that taught me was like you uh, have to really be appreciative of the time you do have with your family, one. And and two, you have to be OK to be by yourself when the when the time comes, you know, um, and I, I realized that I was like, oh, I actually. I'm okay being on myself. I write and I, I, but not everyone's like that. You know, not everyone, people need human contact and connection every day. Um, that's just a personality that they have. I mean, for work, I get to do that all the time. I get to interact with other humans. Um, and so having the downtime where I was just on my own was kind of like a, oh, this is different. And I was like, no, yeah, I can do it. Um, but that's not everyone, you know? So it made me realize, oh, this must be really hard right now for people who are just jumping off the walls. So, you know, family and health, that's all that really matters in a day and everything else we can deal with. Yeah, and, and people have formed fa uh, families within fandoms, you know what I mean? And I think that's been super important, and, and there's been a lot of connection. Um, yeah, we're separated by this screen, but there's been a lot of connection um, anyway. You know, people from around the world are now. Uh, Jujuveen says, uh, what we do in the shadows helped me get through 2020 with some joy. Chelsea Nerd said, the, what we do in the shadows fandom and the Harvey fandom in particular has brought so many of us together. I've made so many oh. friends through the fandom. Poppy Plant said, the shadow community has really helped me out these last few months. Love all my new friends. So, I mean, my gosh, like, even though we're so apart and separated there is this cool because we're we're lucky enough to have this digital medium these days there is a, a little bit of uh connection that can happen which is which is super awesome yeah we're still you know together apart you know and that's yeah. kind of great you know with what you guys do here is that uh you bring us together and we get to talk to the fans and and even though we you know it'll, it'll be a second before we can do this in person and do it safely it doesn't mean that we can check in with each other so this is always fun yeah, well, we can't wait for season three. We can't wait for season, the, the remaining episodes of Zoe's. Um, can you tell us anything at all? You mentioned werewolves before, and it put a, I put a check mark in the back of my head. Werewolves Within, one of the, like, the most popular cult games of all time. Uh, we know it's, that you've been announced to be in it. It's wrapped, right? Uh, what can you tell us about that and your excitement about I that film? I can tell you that we will be premiering this year oh. at a very big event. Uh, <laughs> I can tell you that much. <laughs> <laughs> it's perfect. It's perfect. I, can't, I, I just because I just personally got you know the email like two days ago oh, that's um, awesome. from the producers and the directors and stuff, and it's like oh great news, and it's actually it was really gr a great uh, scenario. We um, had options. It was like a champagne prom, so we had options of premiering at different major events, and oh. we finalized which one that is. And I can tell you that it's coming this summer. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's uh, people are like all across the world right now are, are just put in episode four of Zoe's just very very vague uh, thing there and then vague summer event big summer yeah. event. <laughs> <laughs> I can't give all the secrets away. Then you know you have to tune in and watch it. So. No, of course, of course. Well, and I'm sure whatever this event is is also going through a lot to make sure that that can happen as well. They can totally, have, yeah. Well, you know what I mean, so we don't want to put any pressure there. So we're, that, it's a totally excited. Can't wait for that. Um, can I can I do a couple quick um, uh, questions here? We're almost out of time, Harvey, and I just want to let the fans know. Uh, don't forget, um, I just mentioned, you know, making connections and that what we do in the Shadows um, fandom and the Magician's fandom and Zoe's fandom uh, and the family, you can purchase those one-on-one -on -one chats uh, with Harvey. They'll be taking place next weekend, uh, Sunday the 17th. Um, so definitely head to wizardworldvault.com and purchase those now. He also is doing video recorded messages, um, virtual photo ops, autographs. So uh, whether you're watching this live Saturday the 9th or throughout the week, definitely take advantage of those. Um, there was some, I, I love just the fun, fun specific questions that come uh, randomly through. So I've got to ask you first up from at Shells Nerd who submitted uh, so many questions and we love them all. Uh, perhaps the most hotly debated topic among Guillermo fans this season for, uh, moving into season three is side part, middle part, no part. Which hair can we expect for season three? <laughs> well, that's very good observation, Chels, because <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I think that we left <laughs> off with Guillermo hair being disheveled we're very yeah. subtle at the like the things that he does change about himself and you notice that you know um when his hair is curled in the middle and it's parted that's what i did for the audition and i just remember doing it because i thought what would make him look older and like classic and i was thinking like you know of dracula and like uh you know like the actual curl like you know big bouffant hair <laughs> and that's why that idea came about and then when i went and shot the pilot i didn't think they were going to pick that hair like you know style and i remember taika was there and he's like yeah what you do for the audition and i was like oh i think i parted my hair in the middle and i curled it. he's like yeah let's do that and i was like what and he's like yeah we're gonna do that and i was like oh 
okay. And it's like, and what you wear? And I was like, oh, I wore these Harry Potter glasses of the audition. I popped out their circle. Yeah, let's see that. <laughs> like, oh, and I was like, and I wore this sweater. Yeah, let's see that. And I was like, so they actually That's told the costume funny. designer and the hair people to just mimic what I wore to the audition. And I thought I was, I they would never go for that. I just wanted to make <laughs> And I was like, this character, because Guillermo, if you remember, uh, the character was 20 years older than I am. And so I thought I'm too young for the role. I'm just going to go in like a wild card. And so I just wanted to make a statement and be like, well, this is what I think this guy would look like. That's and hilarious. Sure enough, they were like, yeah, that's what he looks like. And I was like, oh, great. Um, and so throughout the seasons, we slowly have like tried, in season one, we tried like a part. Um, it just was going with us like what he was feeling. He thought he was gonna be promoted. It mm -hmm. didn't work out. And then he goes back to his party in his hair, um, which adds structure and it's supposed to be like something that it's put together. He's at work always, it's his work attire, you know? Um, and then towards the end where he leaves the house of season two and goes back to his mom's house and then goes to the fight, like he stops caring about the structure a little bit. So it's a little bit messier and it's a little bit to the side and it's still curly and messy, but it's not parted. The, the effort of it is no longer there because he has, he is he's done with that dream right when he leaves yeah, that yeah. too so there's subtle little things but i'm glad that you know chelsea caught it because um yeah. some people wouldn't have caught it they're like oh his hair changed i was like yeah they're just subtle little things that that we did that uh and and i think going to season two who knows like who knows what this trajectory does he you know go in on adventure what is he doing we don't know you have to wait and see but for me i i'm always up for you know people evolve and sort of the hair color or whatever yeah yeah so he could he could be evolving to something different and that's okay so hair change could be good no it's a natural thing that we do in real life you know what i mean as we change our appearances and our outfits based on what our lifestyle is like Fred dan and a lot of the fans are talking about the outfit uh, which outfit the, how the outfits changed as well subtly um with the hairstyle uh benga 77 wants to know if you were a vampire would you suck blood or would you scrape people and lick it and uh, it. that sounds more like I don't, I don't know if I would. Uh, I think I'd just go straight for the sucking. Yeah, <laughs> just, yeah. I, I think, don't know. I think I, we can leave it as that. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I want to. Like, I'm already like biting someone and maybe sucking their life out of them. Like, it's I don't want to be like scratchy scratch. <laughs> like, sorry. Like, I don't think I want to. I don't want to elongate the process. Of, <laughs> yeah. Seems violent. Seems seems blood. unnecessarily. Uh, yeah, sorry. Just go. Go for it. Just go if, that, if I was an vampire. So, <laughs> well, thank you for uh, answering those questions, Harvey. Um, we are out of time. This was such a treat uh, to talk about um, some of our excited projects uh, with you coming up, uh, things that you've done in the past. Um, Turbo Shani says, uh, Harvey's so sweet and responsive on Twitter. I don't have anything left to ask because you always answer them. So, uh, the fans definitely appreciate you being here again uh, from around the world. I want to give you an opportunity just to, you know, say goodbye, say, uh, say what, what you will for the fans, you know, what you're excited about uh, in this new year. And then, uh, yeah, just your final words for the fans watching. Yeah, I just want to say thank you so much for always supporting, you know, the show or any project that I do. You guys are amazing. And thank you for having me here today. And I, I'm always looking forward to creating new content for you guys or helping or using my platform to like, um, you know, help organizations or charities. I've been working with the Self-Evident Project and we, um, my friends, and I have designed a familiar sweatshirt that you guys oh. can actually, if you want to be a familiar, you can get one. And by doing so, so you're helping the self-evident project, which helps um, queer people during uh, COVID um, pandemic. So if you want to help out, you can go to Foolish Mortals. Uh, I'm a foolish mortal.com and check out the familiar sweater. I actually have it. Here's right here. Ooh. So you guys can check out the sweater. And I know we designed this. So I'm really excited about it. <laughs> oh, that See? is amazing. And you said, sorry, so, say so, the website one more time. I'm a foolish mortal.com. I'm a foolish mortal.com. Yeah. And so cool. yeah, that's Topher's website. And we designed it with my friend, Jess. And we're really excited and just glad you get to look cool and also help during this pandemic. I'm pretty all for that. And I love using my platform for that. And thanks to you guys, I'm allowed to do that. So thank you guys to the fans for always yeah. like. <laughs> Yay, so awesome. A uh, couple, again, don't forget you can purchase those uh, paid experiences with Harvey. Um, those will be happening next weekend. Um, later today, we're having a fun, awesome horror comedy day, everybody. Uh, we have the cast of Ash vs. Evil Dead joining us in, a, in a, just a few hours. Uh, I'll be there as well, so come join me in a, in a bit. Uh, next weekend, including um, Harvey, we also have uh, the voice cast of the Adam Maniacs. Um, you can play Cards Against Humanity with the cast of Charmed. Um, we have stars from classic sitcoms coming up. Tala Ash from Legends of uh, Tomorrow. Chris Kattan from SNL and Dolph Lundgren wraps up uh, the month. So quite the range of fun fandoms and we love uh, connecting with all of you. So continue to follow us at Wizard World on Facebook, 
Instagram and Twitter. My name is Mike G. I've been your moderator. You can follow me at Mike G Does Things. Uh, but on behalf of all the fans watching, um, uh, we are so excited for episode four of Zoe's uh, Extraordinary Playlist. Some random event um, in the summer <laughs> for uh, Werewolves Within. And whenever um, season three of What We Do in the Shadows is coming out fall, 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 Halloween, Halloween. Yeah. Um, yeah, thank you so much. Let's give another big round of emojis for Harvey Guillen, everybody. Bye, Harvey. Bye, uh, friends. Thank you. Thank you. Hours. Thanks a lot. This is John Glover, and you are watching Fandom Spotlight. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Lionel Luther recommends it. Ah, have some fun. Follow your fandom.